少，因人寻，卡埃拉人，阿萨卡哈拉人，扎卡拉人，少爱因人寻。Namaste. So, God and religion—they never meet. Why? Because external things like religion and internal things like God. Are diametrically opposite. <laughs> you can't artificially bring them together. So, especially organized religion is so far from God. You know the thing about every religion. If you look at the history of religion, over thousands of years. Is that they eventually become their own opposite? What starts out as a mystical practice, leading to inner realization, gradually transforms into an external, artificial group activity. Designed for social control, isn't it? Look at the history of Christianity, Islam. You know, and don't tell me about Hinduism, quote unquote, because it's not one thing. <laughs> it's many religions, but they all have this one thing in common: Buddhism. Any ism <laughs> that they're a group activity, and a group requires a leader, and a leader has to have power, and power corrupts. <laughs> It's just human nature, you know. The poor devils. They want a nice position, they want to be admired, they want to be. Maybe they have a desire to be in control because they're afraid. So they make a religious organization, but what is an organization? It's an abstraction. It's just a name. Huh? Go to any church or any temple, and what do you see? A building, and people, and maybe some statues and other paraphernalia for worship. And some books, maybe, huh? and people are studying the books and like that. That's what it is—a building and some people. But then, what is it cracked up to be? What is it described as? Oh, this is a religion. Huh? It's spiritual. No, it's not. It's just a building with some people in it. <laughs> Duh. See, we go through life fast asleep and dreaming. We dream all kinds of imaginary things, beginning with I, the individual, the ego, the so-called self with a small s. What is the reality? <laughs> Just a world full of people and animals and things, huh? and within is the God. The God is consciousness. The God is being. The God is us. So, how did things get so mixed up? Well, when people are born into this world, they come out ignorant. Somehow they have to be educated.、Uh, 
They don't know God. Huh? Ask any little baby. <laughs> they don't know nothing about God. They are experiencing God every moment, but they don't know. See, everyone experiences God at every moment because we're all conscious. And God is consciousness. God is nothing but consciousness. <laughs> but people are ignorant and they're afraid. This world is full of danger, uncertainty. Look at this coronavirus thing, this tragedy. Huh? Life is full of suffering. It's full of anxiety. And so people join groups to get some comfort, to get some relief. But then what happens? <laughs> the group starts telling them how to be, what to say, what to wear, what to think, uh, what to do. So it just becomes about social control. Look at how Christianity was taken over by the Roman Empire. See? And look at how many teachers today, if you go, if you look around, especially in India, you'll see the big, big teachers all have political connections. The politicians love the religious teachers because it's a way to get people to think in a certain way, to behave in a certain way. So what does this have to do with God exactly? <laughs> Please explain. Well, the idea behind religion is actually good. That here's a place where you can go and people will explain to you about God. But what they always forget to explain <laughs> is that the real religious people are not found in the temple. The real religious people are off in their own private spaces, doing their practices and attaining self-realization on their own. Because that's the only way you can attain you cannot attain in a group. Yeah, maybe you can pick up some knowledge. Maybe you can learn some techniques. Maybe you can get some ideas on how to practice, some advice, especially if there are any knowledgeable people involved. But really, you know, where are the really good people? I live right across the street from a temple. Actually, it's a very nice temple. And two or three times a week, they have a big group meeting there. Huh? All idiots. <laughs> None of them are practicing anything except coming to the temple and doing the group thing. Right? But the house next door to the temple, the man who lives there, who never goes to the temple, <laughs> has a whole seen on his roof with a Shiva Lingam and all kinds of equipment for puja. And he gets up every morning before dawn and he does a fire ceremony. See? And in the evening at sunset, again. So this guy is really practicing what the temple is trying to teach people. <laughs> See, I never go to the temple. My house is my temple. I have all the puja equipment here, I can, and then I can do my meditation and do my practices here. And I do. I don't need the temple. I already have the knowledge. And you can have it too. Huh? We have like, 700 and I don't know, 50 <laughs> videos or something about all kinds of topics on spiritual life. And none of them are about religion. None of them are saying, join our group, 
give us money. <laughs> because as soon as you have a group, you have to have a place, right? And places cost money. So then there's the economic question and oh, so many problems. The power question is the biggest one. Religion means control. Any external group activity. And you've been conditioned since childhood, since school, to think of yourself as part of a group, to consider your identity as belonging to a class. Huh? Teacher comes in the morning, good morning, class. <laughs> Good morning, teacher. Uh, this is social programming. This is behavioral operant conditioning. It's the technical term for it. Right? Every day, every morning, do the same thing. <laughs> in conservatory, we had an ear training class at 8 in the morning. Everybody shuffles in there all bleary-eyed. <laughs> and the teacher comes in and says, Sing middle C. Ba. I can still do it. It's conditioning. And through habit and conditioning, one develops certain mental patterns, patterns of thought and behavior, and these stick with you throughout life. But <laughs> they will not help you realize God. They will not help you become enlightened. Only going within and observing yourself honestly will bring you to self-realization. And then what? Huh? What do you see? Well, what do you realize? <laughs> you realize that God is everywhere. God is in everything. God is in you. Huh? God is you. Specifically, your consciousness. Uh, or actually, that's goddess. Consciousness is goddess. <laughs> Shakti. And the pure awareness and pure being behind consciousness is Shiva. This is God. So, everybody has God within. Huh? What is the need for some external practice? Well... It's nice for purification, to have good quality of life. That's why I wear the Pasma, the Tripundra. That's why I do certain rituals and mantras and stuff like that. It's just for external quality of life. Because otherwise the body and mind would get out of control, out of regulation, become impure. And that causes stress and uh, disease and so on. So to keep that all in line, I do certain external practices. But nobody is telling me to do that. There's no authority over me who's running my life. And it's been that way for a long time. <laughs> and I'm so much better off. Huh? So you can be religious or better spiritual without being part of a religion. And that's actually a better way to do it. Look, all these books that we've been teaching from are available online. Just a little effort, go looking for them. You can find them. You can download them. You can study them in the privacy of your own place. Huh? But you first have to come to the realization that in this world, nobody is going to help you. Nobody can help you. Yeah, you can go to some temple or you can go to some church or you can go to some yoga class. Huh? I, lo I love it, you know. They call it Ashtanga Yoga, which means eight limbs. But if you go there, they're just teaching exercises. <laughs> They should call it Ekanga Yoga. <laughs> that would be honest. But they're not honest. Groups are never honest. Because they're basically sales organizations. They're selling you a certain set of beliefs and practices. 
And they're always only a small part of the full spectrum of spiritual practices. See, we present the whole spectrum. From the very beginning, the Dvaita Vada, all the way to the top, the Ajata Vada. And we let you choose. In fact, we encourage you. <laughs> once you understand the system, once you have the view, the right view, we encourage you to take the initiative, see where you are on this spectrum, on this path. Because the path is the same, no matter whether you're a Vaishnava, a Shaivite, a Muslim, a Christian, or I don't know, Native American or whatever, you still pass through these same stages. So once you learn the stages, once you learn the process, the general process, huh, you can apply it to anything according to your preference. And we encourage that because whatever you have faith in, whatever you trust, can be a vehicle to bring you within. See? And once you're established within, and once you're observing without any bias what's going on within, you automatically will come to the conclusion of self-realization. That aham brahmasmi, huh? shivoham, tattvamasi, sarvakalvidam brahma. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung. 